Go ahead. Bouncing around against some rough road. And believe me, folks, we are going to take some rough road out there. And watch your hands be on the right. All right, thank you, Morton. We'll see you back here in two weeks. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Well, Jumbo, everybody, my name is Jordan. I will be your game driver right here for the next two weeks while we safari through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Uh, folks, I just ask that while we're moving out here, you guys stay seated at all times. Try and keep your hands, arms, and other valued pictures inside the truck because we can go by a lot of rough brush and some of those bushes have some pretty long thorns out there. Also, you guys are taking any pictures or videos. Now is an excellent time to get one of your very favorite game driver. <laughs> Which would be me. But if you are taking pictures of the animals, just make sure you hang on to those cameras tightly. Your reserve does not allow us to pick up anything that you might drop off of the truck. Hey, Jumbo Zer. Uh, this is how we say hello here in Harambe. We just say Jambo. So if somebody comes up to you and says Jambo, just say Jambo right back. Now folks, in the unfortunate event that you do happen to drop something off the truck, here's what you need to do. What you're going to do is look up in this mirror at me, and you're going to wave at me. And I'm going to look back in the mirror, and I'm going to wave at you. And then we're both going to turn around and wave a goodbye. <laughs> so don't drop it. We're going to wait here for just a second to make sure this uh, truck in front of us gets far enough that they don't fling the mud up on us. Alrighty, well folks, as we say in Harambe, we say Twin Day, which means let's go! Morton's up there. Actually just flying around up above the reserve, just kind of keeping an eye out for birds and animals and things. Alrighty guys, we are inside the reserve now, so just kind of keep your eyes open for any animals we might be seeing out here. Sometimes spot of copies or bongos, and sometimes even some black rhinos out here. Over to the right, we've got a yellowback diker. That smaller, the smaller animal right out in the middle with the yellow spot on its back. And further back, there's a very dark brown animal with the black and white stripes on its legs. Those are okapi. Copies actually were thought to be relatives of zebras because of those stripes, but they're actually more closely related to the giraffe. Over here to the left, a tan animal with the light stripes, that is a greater kudu. Those are the second largest antelope out here in Africa. They can actually get up to 750 pounds. Down here along the water, we've actually got a couple of yellow-billed storks. And also on the hillside in front of us, we've got a bongo. A rusty colored animal with the light stripes on his side. Bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest because they are very rarely seen out here. Oh, guys, over here to the left, we've got a black rhino, everybody. Straight over to the left. Those guys are pretty tough, but they're not indestructible. They've been hit really hard by poaching. There's actually less than 3,100 black rhinos left out in the wild. A couple more bongos over here on the right-hand side, everybody. If you look at the horns on these bongos, you'll notice they're all pointed backwards. So that when they're running through the forest, they don't get their horns tangled up on any bushes or any branches they're running through. Oh, and then way off to the left, everybody, there's some sentinel storks way back there. Those are the tallest storks in Africa. They can stand up to five feet tall. They have a wingspan of eight to nine feet across. Well guys, since we are just beginning off our two-week safari out here, I don't really want to start off with a bunch of driving. So instead of heading over to the lake, which is over here to the west, about 20 to 25 kilometers, we're just going to go around the corner here and head over to the Safi River and see what we can find over there. Pretty sure it's still shallow enough this time of year we can cross there without getting stuck in the mud, but I guess we'll just wait and see. Well, this is the Safi River, folks, and uh, it is known to have some Nile hippopotamus in it, so just kind of keep your eyes open over here to the right, and out in front of us. Oh, but there's a whole bunch of them over to the left, everybody. Now these guys, they will get up to about 5,000 pounds, and uh, if you can imagine being that big, it's probably not real easy to swim. So what they do instead is they'll actually just sink all the way to the bottom and then just walk along the riverbed. Some pintail ducks on the little island over to the left. This bird's swimming down here in the water. That's a white-breasted tamarant. Very cool bird. It dives through the water very fast. 
See some of those crocodiles down there. Tell you what, folks, these are Nile crocodiles. They actually get bigger than American alligators. They can get up to 20 feet long. Look at them swim through there. Actually, have very powerful jaws. Their jaws can close with a pressure of 1,200 pounds per square inch. Oh man, you heard on the radio that was a good friend of mine. His name is Wilson Matua. Actually trained together here at the reserve, good buddies. And uh, he is one of our wardens out here. He's just kind of flying around, keeping a look out for poachers and sick animals out there. Oh boy, folks, right in front of us here, off to the right-hand side, we've got one of our oldest and finest baobab trees. Now, I've been told that this tree is actually over 1,000 years old, everybody. If you look straight in front of us, you'll see one of the finest views in the whole reserve. Actually looks out across the van, which is part of the Serengeti grassland system. Zebra and wildebeest will migrate yearly, and other animals like lions, elephants, and this giraffe, they'll stay here pretty much year-round. It's all part of the wild Africa that we're working very hard to save out here. I see you down there. You are in bush country. Drive carefully. I don't want you bumping into my animals. You should begin to see a wide variety of grass-eating animals around you, such as Thompson's gazelle. <laughs> Miss Thompson, no one in Africa calls them Thompson's gazelle. They are turbies. Turbies. Over. All right, Wilson, I'll keep a look out for those tommies. Folks, I don't see any Thompson gazelles out here yet, but over to the right, we do have some impala. Those impalas are savanna dwellers. They're very common out there. See the males have horns and the females do not. And these trees ahead of us on either side are sausage trees. Pegilia africana. See the sausages hanging down? They're a hard, sour fruit that the locals use to make a lemonade sort of drink. Oh, we've got some seagull antelope over to the left, everybody. Those dark brown animals with the long horns. That actually is the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Those long horns of theirs can actually get up to 60 inches long. Oh, we've got some termite mounds over here, these tall cones of earth, everybody. Those mounds are actually as hard as concrete. Oh, then we've got some white rooted wildebeest over here also. These guys are part of the largest land migration left on Earth. There's anywhere from one million to one and a half million wildebeest that'll migrate across the van each year. Gonna get another nice view of this reticulated giraffe, guys. These are the tallest animals in the world. They can reach heights of 18, 20 feet tall, weighing up to 2,500 pounds. Hello. It looks like the giraffes are doing what they do most and pretty much all day, and that's eating. I actually spend anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day feeding. Now guys, the look at this van out here is pretty much created by all of the animals that live out here. <coughs> the elephants are the bulldozers out on this van and they actually push over trees to eat them, which allows them for more plants to grow. The giraffes will come through and prune the undersides of the trees, allowing some more light to shine through. The larger antelope and the zebras will mow down all these really tall grasses. And the little nibblers like the gazelles, <coughs> the warthogs, they just kind of clean up the edges and it creates a balanced natural system where there's plenty of food for everybody. Well, folks, I think, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take us on into elephant country out there. So let's just kind of keep our eyes open and hopefully we'll see our two most famous residents out there, Big Red and Little Red. Also, folks, sometimes on the other side of these rocks, we will see some mandrels out here. Now, does anybody happen to know what a mandrel is? No? Well, they're monkeys. They're actually some of the largest monkeys in Africa, getting up to 100 pounds. 